Hello everybody and today we are removing boom poles. So sometimes when you are shooting a shot, it can be pretty hard to avoid getting a boom pole from getting into your shot. Now, especially if that shot is a wide angle shot, it can be even harder to get that boom pole out of your shot. Now in this shot here, this is a shot from a short film that I shot recently. Now I decided to allow the boom pole to be in the shot because given that this is a lockdown shot, that means the camera is placed on the tripod and it doesn't uh, the frame doesn't move throughout the shot. So this is going to be a relatively easy shot to remove the boom pole from. So it's generally much easier to remove uh, the boom pole in a shot like this, whereby the frame doesn't move around and the boom pole is only in the upper region of the shot and it doesn't really interrupt the action going beyond this top layer. So now what we need to do is find a clean plate. Now a clean plate is basically a frame whereby we cannot see the boom pole inside the shot. So for example, this frame here would be a very nice clean plate for us. Now we don't need a clean plate of the entire shot because we are only dealing with the topmost region of the shot here because that's where the boom pole will be showing up. So we just need the top part here to be clean. So the action is all down there, but we are just dealing with this top bit here because the boom pole doesn't go down there. So what we need to do here first is to duplicate this layer. Basically just copy and paste the layer, control C, control V. Now we're not done yet because we need to freeze this frame in time throughout our entire timeline. We don't want it to move around because this frame is our clean plate. We only need one frame to be our clean plate. Now to do that, it's very simple. Just select this top layer here, right click, select time, go to freeze frame, and you can see there's this little keyframe here. That means this frame is going to be used as the freeze frame. And when I scrub through the timeline, you can see it doesn't move because it's frozen in time. So as you can see, this is the bottom layer. When I, when I um, make the top layer un invisible, you can see the bottom layer showing up. So if you do not have a frame that can be used as your clean plate, uh, that means your boom pole is showing up throughout the entire shot. There's no frame whereby the boom pole is not visible. Then you will have to create your own cre clean plate. You have to generate one. Basically, you have to import a frame as a still into Adobe Photoshop or any other image processing software that's capable of removing the boom pole manually. Using the tools inside the image editing software, you remove the pole and then you re-export that frame back into After Effects and then use that still as the clean plate. So let's try that now. Let's say we are going to use this random frame as our clean plate. Not exactly clean yet because we still need to clean it up in Photoshop. So let's export this frame. Just select the bottom layer here, go to Composition, Save Frame as File. Now output module, let's set it to JPEG. Under render settings, make sure resolution is set to full. Hit OK and hit output and I hit render. It should only take an instant because it's only rendering one frame. Navigate to that file we just exported, import it into Photoshop and then use something like the clone stamp tool to remove the boom pole. And we are done, save that frame. And then let's drag that frame back into Adobe After Effects. Oops. And there we have our clean plate. Now all that's left to do now is to mask. So masking is basically just allowing only a region to show up. So wherever I mask, whatever is qualified inside that mask that I make, only the region inside that mask will be showing up in that particular layer and anything that's outside of that mask will show up as transparent. So to mask, we can just go to the pen tool. The shortcut key for that is G. 
and then just mask around the top bits of our video where our boom pole is going to be interrupting. So there we go. Only the top layer is visible. When I turn off the bottom layer, you can see only this top area that I mask around is visible and then we can scrub through our video. And that is working pretty well. So be careful not to place the mask too low or you'll be obscuring your actors like this and then this weirdness is just going to happen. So make sure you, you position your mask low enough to cover the boom pole but not too low so that you cover up the action of your actors. So if you want it to blend even better, I suggest adding a little bit of a feather to your mask by going to the drop down menu and then setting the mask feather to something like 30 pixels. So we are actually smoothing up the edges of the mask so it blends in better. So when I turn off the bottom layer, you can see it actually smoothens out the edges of the mask so it blends much better. So for this other shot right here, it's going to be a little different. As you can see, we still have the boom pole going into the shot. Now, if we use the same technique we used in the first shot and we only mask around the top area like this, now you can see it works well at first. Now you can still see a little bit of the boom pole here. So let's push this down a little bit. Our actor stands up all of a sudden and he will stick his head into the mask. Now our boom operator was very responsive and she moved the boom right off the way as he is standing up. However, that means we will have to move our mask as well. So not to worry, moving a mask is actually pretty simple. Now as you can see, he walks into the frame here, so his head actually pokes through the mask as well. So we kind of, we're kind of beheading him. So it's very simple to animate a mask. So all we have to do is go down into the mask drop down menu. So what we have to do is actually click this little stopwatch next to mask path. So when we do that, we actually, we actually activate keyframing. So keyframing basically means we can set different points of which the mask path is going to be. So when we set keyframes, it basically allows us to animate the mask. So let's delete this keyframe for now by hitting the little keyframe icon. So we're going to go to move to the frame where our actor, our police actor moves right into the frame. That would be here. So hit the stopwatch to create a keyframe. So when I try to drag a point, you can see it moves the entire mask around. That's because I have mask path selected. Whenever you have mask path selected, when you try to drag the mask, it just moves the entire mask around. So to edit just an individual point. Now prior to this, I suggest to add more points so you have more versatility but of course you can always add points later on by selecting the pen tool and just clicking somewhere on the mask path and it will add points right there. So to move just a point of the mask select mask feather and then it will allow you to just move the mask points around not the entire mask around. So right now we know he's going to walk into his seat so I'm going to keep the mask high up So when we move forwards, basically all we have to do is really just keep masking around the boom pole. Just keep the mask around the boom pole. Be careful not to cover, chop anything off your actors. And then always keep the boom pole covered. Now what I like to do is actually activate this layer so we can see the final results but not quite because we're going to lower the mask opacity to 50%. So just keep animating the mask around your boom pole. Now don't worry if there are spaces between your keyframes because After Effects will sort of just fill those in automatic, uh, automatically because it will uh, gradually move the mask from the previous keyframe gradually towards the setting in the next keyframe. So, can, so as you can see here, our actor will suddenly shoot upwards. So all we have to do is really just follow the motion. So right before he stands up, we are going to add one keyframe by hitting add keyframe over here. Then when he stands up, we are going to move the keyframe. Sorry, let me select the mask feather. We are going to move the point up along with him. So 
So once all that is done, you can put the mask opacity back to 100% and see that the boom pole is gone from the shot. No more boom pole poking into your shots. Alright, that is it for part 1 of this tutorial. Please stay tuned for part 2 while I will talk about how to remove a boom pole from a handheld shot where the frame is not static and the frame is sort of moving around. So that is it everyone, stay tuned for the part 2. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.